Hey everybody, welcome to DJ Tutorials. This is a follow-up to the displacement video that I released. And this is going to be looking at adaptive subdivision for displacement maps. And before we begin, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I want to give a shout out to Oliver Woznitsa, who uh, let me know about this. There's a lot of things in ProRender that's adapting and changing and all of that. And I love it that... Um, you guys give me these sort, these kinds of feedback and this type of stuff. So thank you so much. And for anybody who sees a mistake or there's something that you um, have found that will work out easier or better, or you just have some suggestions for other users, please, please, please do like Oliver here and uh, provide all of the other users. And uh, for this one, I pinned it so that everybody can see it. Um, but I will show you how to do this yourselves in this video because there are some nuances to this. Now, for me, I am using, if I go in here to the add-ons, you can see right here I'm using version 2.5.3. So this is the more recent build from, from the developers. And just keep that in mind because I'm gonna have some stuff that you may not see, but I'm gonna explain to you what the differences are. So if you go up here, you'll see that I have full and legacy. For those of you using the official release, legacy is what is called the full. And if you have the 2.0 beta in yours, that is what is now called full. I know it's a little bit confusing, but basically legacy is the old render engine and it is called 1.0 or legacy and the 2.0 render is called full. So if you're like me and you're using the development builds to look at stuff and test, I will show you how to do uh, this effect on both of these versions of the um, of the engine and explain to you the nuances on how it works. So um, hopefully uh, by the end of this, you'll have something that looks kind of like this, like I showed in the intro to this video, and hopefully you won't have any other issues. Now, I will sit, tell you right now, just like any time I talk about any of these beta builds or anything like that for ProRender, there are a lot of things that are in the works and you might run into a few issues, but Let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, you need to have a displacement map. And I just created this uh, to basically carve my name into this uh, sphere. And a black and white image will do, um, or you can convert a color image to a black and white using something like a converter color ramp and piping it in to the, the color ramp like that. So if, you know, this wasn't a, if this was a, colored uh, image, you can pop that into the color ramp. So that's fine. Um, but we don't need to do that here. And this is also a really cool technique. I don't know if you guys want me to show you how to do this, but um, basically this will create a stamped um, uh, depth map into my object here. So the other thing that you really need to make sure that you do, and this is very important for ProRender in general, is that when you're doing these things, you need to unwrap your object and make sure that you're unwrapping it correctly. So if I go into the tab mode here, you can see that the area that I want to actually be uh, uh, pushed in for the depth map is right here on this UV unwrap. And then the rest of it, I kind of just put over here. So not the best uh, mapping system or anything like that, but this is a really quick uh, tutorial just to show you guys how this works. So when I look at this and I'm gonna save this here, if I look through the image map and go to the rendered view, and I move around the object, you can see that the, and let me just remove this here since you guys aren't, uh, we're not at that point yet. But if I'm looking through this uh, node, my image node that I put in here, you can see that the black and white value is placed onto the ball, okay? So the next step that you really wanna do after you've uh, unwrapped your object, you have your mapping node in here, and then you have your image texture or whatever it is that you're creating, whether it's a procedural texture or whatever it is, you have it here for the depth map. You wanna throw it into a displacement node, okay? And you can just hit Shift A, you can go into vector and go to displacement and it's right there. And what you wanna do is throw this right into the height and then take that and move that into the displacement material output. Now, the other thing that is going to happen or that you need to do is, oops, let me close that. You need to come over here and you need to go to your materials tab right here. 
and then you need to go to where it says displacement and it's going to automatically just be a bump only method and what you want to do is change this to displacement and you'll see that once i did that there was a shift a change in the actual sphere it's already applying that uh, displacement map to my sphere now it's not exactly refined or anything like that and if i actually save here and look through the shader you can see that it looks really weird. It's just kind of like bumpy or whatever. So uh, that's an issue, but don't worry about it. We will fix it in a moment. So um, the next thing that you wanna do here is you wanna go over to your object properties. So you wanna go to this one right here, and then under the drop down that says uh, RPR settings right here, you're gonna go down and you'll see this little button right here that says subdivision, okay? Now, I'm going to make a recommendation that you just be careful. Keep this at a 1 for the moment. And you'll turn on the subdivision. So I'm just clicking this box here. And then I'm going to actually change this to what it is originally, which is this crease weight here. I'm just going to put that to a 1, since that's usually what it uh, starts out as. So basically what you have here and we're on the legacy one so if you have the uh, official build you should be seeing something similar to this basically what you're seeing is a subdivision of this ob uh, this uh, displacement and it's supposed to be based on where you are in relation to the object as far as the camera is concerned so if you back up really 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 far away the idea is that it will only give the right amount of subdivision for that object based on how close it is to the camera, okay? And you choose the amount of subdivisions by going here, and it says right here, um, subdivision polygon size and pixels that it should be uh, subdivided to for finer subdivision set lower. So if you set this to a 10, for example, and if we zoom in on it, And you can see that as I back off away from it, it's getting more and more jagged. And I hope that you guys can see that. And if I zoom in closer and closer and closer, you can see that it's a little bit more refined. So if I change this to, let's say, a 2, it'll take a little bit longer to uh, build, bring in the uh, subdivisions. But the idea is that the lower this number, the more detailed it's going to be. So again, if I put a 50 in here, or something like that, something that's a lot bigger, you can see that it is changing and shifting um, according to that. Okay, and if you put in a one, for example, it's gonna be even more refined. Now you can go below a one, um, you can uh, basically go as low as your computer will handle it, but it's going to take a lot longer to uh, uh, calculate that with whatever the CPU and GPUs that you have are. So just keep that in mind when you're setting this uh, polygon size. Now the crease weight is basically, um, it's saying uh, like if you had a plane or something like that, if it's going to crease the object uh, edges. So basically for this, um, you can play with this and change the edge only and edge to corner or edge and corner. So it's basically the same as if you go into edit mode and then you open up the properties up here and give it just a second. So if I go over here, you can see right here, there's a mean crease. So this is how you kind of like adjust the edges data and stuff like that for um, certain objects. I'm not going to go into the details on this. Just the best thing I can say is if this is all new to you, play with the crease weight and the boundary type to get uh, more or less what you want. And if you have something that has sharp edges like a box or like a ground plane or something like that, uh, this is where you want to make those adjustments for the edges and things like that. So um, make sure that you take care of that. The next thing here, I'm going to show you uh, a couple things about the displacement node itself. You'll see here that it has mid-level and it has the scale. So basically the scale just means if um, like how shallow and how, um, how uh, strong basically you want this displacement to be so same thing like if when we use the uh, the uh, the modifier the displace modifier and I'm just gonna open it up here hopefully it doesn't crash anything <laughs> so yeah basically um, where it shows the mid-level and the strength here like I showed you in the last tutorial series um, you can change basically with the mid-level where that 
displacement is happening and the scale will just increase or decrease how how much depth is in that uh, is in your displacement. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this here. I'm also going to set this at a um, uh, actually I'm going to leave this alone because we're pretty much done with uh, the legacy version. Um, now the the difference between the legacy I'm just going to keep this on over here and just kind of watch what happens in the lower corner here. So I'm going to change from legacy to full, which is the new 2.0 beta. Um, remember, this is I'm using a newer version, so you may not have this. If you want to get it, you can go to the GitHub location. I'll put the link in the description of the video down below. Go in here. If you go to full, you can see that the subdivision amount changed from uh, the 1.0 to a 5. And basically, it works the exact same way as before, except for this is just like if you used a subdivision surface modifier. It's basically just saying, how many levels of subdivision do you want to give to this object? So if I put it to a 1, and I take a look at this, we should be able to see, yep, a very not great looking um, uh, displacement here. So that's what a 1 subdivision would do. And if we do a 5 it should be a lot more refined. Now I have found that with the uh, the new beta, sometimes you get it looking like this where it's a little funky and you might have to reset um, the render view like this. And you can see there it's a lot more refined. So sometimes you have to reset the, the, uh, the viewport here to have it look better. Um, but that's just a, a quirk with the fact that it's a beta uh, version right now. The other thing you can see here is that I have, um, you can see that it's orange here, and that's because I've actually set an animation. So if I go to uh, an earlier part of the timeline, you can see that it's um, it's a lot less obvious. It's a little bit um, it's a little bit more shallow on the object there. And then if I go to frame 40, where the scale is set to a, a uh, 0.1, you can see that it's sort of animated in for depth. So if that's what you're trying to do, create some uh, animated displacement effects or something like that, that's one way that you can do it using this node. So hopefully this helps um, if you were looking for how to do a adaptive displacement for your scene. And hopefully with this tutorial, you should be able to create something that looks a little bit like this. And please feel free to leave a comment uh, below in the uh, comment section or questions or whatever it is below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time on DJ Tutorials.